And all right, everybody, um, we're going to get started with the meeting this afternoon. It's Tuesday, February 14th. This is a virtual meeting for the Northampton License Commission. Um, calling the meeting to order. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. And this meeting is being Zoom recorded. Do we have anybody here for public comment, general public comment? Seeing nobody here, we're going to move on to a couple of quick administrative issues in agenda item number three, applications for short-term liquor licenses. We have Building 8 Brewing uh, serving at Bombix, 130 Pine Street in Florence. This is for a live music event, wine and malt license, Saturday, February 18th, 2023, 5 to 11, Friday, February 24th, 2023, 5 to 11 p.m. And um, we don't require anybody present for this because this is the same event that has, or same type of operation that has been ongoing. One thing to note is we did um, just by chance have this meeting this afternoon schedule so we were able to accommodate them. But in the future, if they are late, uh, if they are missing the deadline for these meetings, we aren't necessarily going to be able to accommodate and have a special meeting just for that. So do either of the commissioners have any questions or comments regarding this agenda item? No, no questions. Okay. No questions. Then I will make a motion to approve the applications for the short-term liquor licenses as outlined in agenda item number three. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Moving on to agenda item four, request to amend the time on a previously approved short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music Incorporated for a Matt Nathanson concert on February 25th, 2023. The requested new start time is 445. Um, we discussed this a little bit at our last meeting, so I'll just go ahead and make a motion to approve the request as outlined in agenda item number four. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, great. Let's move on to our hearing in accordance with MGL Chapter 138, Paragraph 77, to determine whether the licensees have ceased to conduct the license business and whether to cancel the following licenses. 2123 Center Street, LLC, 2628 Center Street, LLC, Calvin Theater Corporation, Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated, and the Pearl Street Nightclub Incorporated. And I'm going to make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. And do we have anybody present for public comment? Annie, nobody's entered? Okay. Then we will move on. And I see Eric is here. Hello. Hi, Eric. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, so we wanted you to come in this afternoon. We had sent an email to have an informal conversation. I think it was our January meeting, but we didn't see you. So we moved nope. on to the hearing portion. Um, and we would like to discuss your five licenses and their current status. Yes, so and I'm, I'm, first of all, I'd also just like to add that I didn't see that email or I would have been present at the January meeting. Okay. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. I mean, I've typically wouldn't miss a meeting if I was asked to attend it. Sure. Well, we're here now, so we will move along. Um, let's just go license by license and start with 2123 Center Street, LLC. I'm looking at your renewal paperwork and the establishment is not open. And you noted in the additional information box that the structure, the building is scheduled to go under a gut renovation late winter. Yes. In fact, they were supposed to have pulled a building permit for demolition two weeks ago, but the contractor that's going to be working on that is finishing up another project and said that he's looking at last week of February for a demo permit. So my guess is at some point next week, they're probably going to be in the building office to pull that permit for the demo and then we'll file paperwork on reconstruction. And what is your plan? So we are reconstructing a full shell and we're in discussion with someone that's looking to rent that facility um, and if that is the case we're looking at a restaurant on the first floor and a, the restaurant and bar as it was years and years ago uh, would utilize the ground floor space that we were using for the basement mm -hmm. uh, which was the establishment name so in that license the goal is if 
if that deal in fact does happen, then we're going to move forward as it's advantageous to us to have a restaurant occupy and lease the ground floor space. And if that deal doesn't happen, then we're going to proceed to just reopen as we had previously been operating as a separate uh, bar establishment on the ground floor. And what, um, so timing on that, you'd be looking at a building permit for the last week of February. So, looking, so, so either way from what we saw in terms of the length of time on what they're going to be needing for construction, it looked as if it was going to be an early summer completion. Okay. Um, so somewhere I don't, you know, I can give you a better idea once they demo and once they get me further information, but my guess is that we're looking at four to five months. And at what point do you anticipate having a contract with this potential restaurant? For so, the we, so we had given them 60 days to, you know, do their diligence and all of the other um, necessary work. Um, I last spoke with them on the third week of January. And, you know, we'll plan to reach out again next week based on the email that, that we had a discussion about timing. So I'll have a much better idea for next month. And when did the 60 days start? Uh, we are up right around St. Patrick's Day, give or take. Okay. And your anticipation is if... At We're going to make... Yeah, if they, we're going to make a decision that if they are serious about moving forward, then we will make a final decision. It's not going to start. It's not harming because we're doing work, base work in the building, regardless of them coming. So that that's not affecting a start date or the work that we're going to be doing. The, the place was tired and, you know, was in need of substantial, you know, just base building work. And we started prior to pandemic. We put a whole new storefront on and then they're waiting on doors for the front and the side. And there's a bunch of work on the exterior of the building. And this work that we're going to be doing is, you know, starting and then moving forward to complete the interior work. So the, you know, the goal is to have a new shelled out space on the first floor and then the gut and revamp of the ground floor, which was the bar that we were operating. And again, by, you know, next month, I'll have a better timeline. I wasn't 100 percent prepared today with a timeline only because we we're still waiting on contractor to get their timeline to us we've asked but they're they're trying to get another job that they've been delayed on finished and it's kind of been a season of that with our subcontractors okay um helen and jennifer yeah I have a, a few questions eric um on that property so do you know when was the last time that you that you were open there uh, we haven't reopened since pandemic. Okay, so it closed. Uh, March, I, give you, I mean, March 14th was the last opening day. Of 2020? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you said that you had started work before the pandemic, and then now you're just continuing work. So we started, now? yeah, the, the no, we didn't start pre-pandemic on the interior. We hadn't, we hadn't done anything on the interior. We had started exterior work, uh, storefront work for the, for the first floor, um, I believe it was November of 20 and started doing work on the exterior. But no, we were operating on the ground floor all the way through the, um, you know, the, the shutdown of pandemic. And then there were plans that um, we had to shut down for what would have been, um, let's see, June, July of 20 was when we were planning, um, July of 20 until um, back to school. So we were planning a several month shutdown of the bar space um, to complete, you know, necessary renovations. And then that just, it, with everything just never happened. Okay. And can I ask why it's taken you until now to... Oh, there's a, a, a litany of reasons. I think, you know, one of which is um, cost and timing of getting people, you know, in and out um, to get the work done. I think we've had just a lot of, uh, a lot of issue related to both. Um, so we had, we had several folks take a look at the job and, you know, we really didn't, we really didn't do anything there whatsoever through much of the pandemic. I think the first time we actually had revisited the interior of that space was, um, and I may be off by a month or two, but it was uh, early part of 22. And um, so it's, you know, the majority of it's just a timing issue with the work that, you know, we planned on doing is not, there's, there's no, there's no one reason. There were a few reasons there. Mm -hmm. And is this a contractor that you were working with previously or is this? Yes, we've worked. Yes, we've worked on a number of projects. 
Okay, so you expect that they'll be able to follow yes. through with this project? Yep. yep. And, yeah, and I had assumed, you know, I was hoping that they would have filed um, permits, so at least you'd see that. But we'll, we'll send a copy to Annie in the office once that permit is been taken out from the city once we receive a copy of it so you know that that work is commencing and is it possible for us to know the name of that contractor i don't know if i'm out of bounds asking that, that um question. as a public hearing i'd rather not just because i don't know if they want their name on it but i'm happy to provide all of that to annie and you can you know you can have that you'll see it on the application of the building permit because they have to file for all of that okay and just so i'm clear you're saying that um you're essentially in negotiations with someone to potentially lease for yeah we've had several people bar. talk to us about the restaurant upstairs and mm -hmm. um is that sorry is that where table nine was is that yeah the restaurant? Yep. okay yes and um we are hoping that we can move forward where someone is going to be interested in if they're interested in taking that space and the ground space it's just advantageous for us and for the neighborhood to have that storefront leased in which case we would transfer that license okay and that would be for the you're saying you uh would be for the entire space for the entire space yeah and you said if that falls through yes then we would just reopen as we had operated as the, the basement past. yep yes yeah, so we'd operated there since 2003 so we 20 you know prior to pandemic i think it was 18 seasons there Um, so just a quick clarifying question. If this, this restaurant comes to fruition and they take over the entire space, the downstairs and the upstairs, you just said you'd be willing to transfer the license to them. If not willing. We would. Yes. There'd be a, would. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, if that, if they choose to take the space, we would be moving forward with the full transfer. Okay. Um, when is the latest, sorry to jump in, um, I'm just thinking with this contractor, you know, I mean, obviously, we're going to be looking closely at if paperwork comes through, and you're hoping, I think you said, by February, to have the building permits pulled. When would the latest be? That they said they're going to have a demo, demo, the demo permit they said would be pulled for next week. So I, I can't tell you when the building, building department's usually pretty quick in issuing the permit. And when once they demo, we'll have a better idea as to the length of time it's going to take for them to put it back. My guess is, as mentioned, I think by July was the goal to have everything set to operate. And I guess, I mean, you probably understand, like, from our point of view, since we're going to be looking for these permits to be pulled, is there a point at which, you know, since since... Yeah. Excuse me for a second. I need to shut a door. Sorry. Um, um, I, I guess what I'm asking is like, if we don't see that pulled in the next couple of weeks, should that cause us concern? Um, I can't imagine that they wouldn't pull it, to be frank with you. And I would, if there was any issue where by the end of this month, a demo permit wasn't um wasn't granted to us from the building department, I'll, I'll communicate that with, in other words, I'll make sure that Annie has written documentation of what's going on on that. So I'll email a copy of the application or the permit to her. And if there is any delay whatsoever, I would send an email to let her know and for what reason it's delayed. But I can't imagine that they'd be delayed in pulling it just given the conversations we've had and you know, explaining to him that you know we're quickly approaching where our internal deadline either for ourselves or for this prospect so my guess is that you know i would say by the end of next week i'll hopefully be able to just forward a copy of the building department permit over to annie so you have that and you won't have to question that further mm -hmm. so that's that's the goal hopefully that'll happen Can I just ask one clarifying question? I apologize, but just to clarify, will the work in the basement and the, the main restaurant area, um, will the demolition and the build out be done regardless of uh, tenant? Yeah, we're if just showing, so the, the majority of the work that we're doing independent of the prospect is in the ground floor area. And the first floor area, most of what needs to be done is just cosmetic in nature. And there's some things that are going to be moved out and um, some new flooring put in, but 
the discussion there would in terms of the tenant as to what they then would want to do they'd have a nice clean shell with which to do whatever cosmetic work they would need to do and so uh, but that's going to be completely independent for instance if they're not um, going to move forward and then if there's not another party that would quickly come and be interested in the same then you know our intent is the ground floor work is going to continue during any period of negotiation with them and if for whatever reason um, you know, this existing prospect uh, doesn't move forward and there's no other prospect that we would just reopen the, the ground floor bar as we've operated for all the years we've operated and then make a decision if in fact we want to either continue to solicit um, and market the space and or just maintain it as we've been um, doing. You know, ideally, we'd like to, we were originally going to open up ourselves on the first floor uh, years ago and then that kind of just, you know, went by the wayside. And so I think it is advantageous if we can find the right operator. You know, the, the issue now is there's, there's no lack of space available for people in town. So what we do have here is that, you know, we have a viable location that's somewhat fairly already, you know, built out for restaurant space and, um, and a nice location on the ground floor for a bar and waiting area. So, you know, we're hopeful that something, you know, will happen. We, really didn't make a decision that we were going to look to, um, you know, to possibly sell and transfer that until um, right around Thanksgiving when we realized that, you know, we had a prospect that was serious about moving forward. So, but it is a process and especially with where financing and interest rates have gone for people, it's, uh, it is a lot more difficult now than it was months and months ago. And we're hopeful with a little help on our end to these folks that we can see the deal through, but we've been down this road before and you just, you don't know. So we're just going to prepare ourselves to maintain at least the ground floor presence for the license. If in fact, this does fall through. And that's why we're not waiting on, you know, we're going to continue on the renovations on the, on the lowest level of ground floor where the basement was operating. So that that's not going to be dependent on anything. Okay. Other questions regarding this license. No. Okay. Eric, just one quick clarification. You said the 60 yeah. days is going to wind up around St. Patrick's day. Yeah. It's about, I think they, and I, I should have that in front of me, but for whatever reason, I want to say it was right around this time in January, it was around the third week of January. So I think we have uh, a right around that third week of March. Um, and we're not, you know, just, I mean, we're not, waiting until then to communicate. I mean, we, we're communicating with them and we're trying to push to see, but, um, you know, I think that they've got both financing and uh, design and all this other stuff that they're trying to make decisions on if they're going to be able to move forward. And so, you know, I think on, on my end, you know, especially after this meeting, uh, if there is, you know, uh, and, you know, I guess I wasn't, wasn't hundred percent certain other than, you know, reading your intent is to, find out what we're doing with the licenses. It wasn't certain that there is any date specific, uh, you know, given the circumstances, especially, but we will push as best we can. There to... will be some dates specific. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're at your time, we are now part of your timeline. Let's just mm -hmm. put it that way, moving forward. Um, okay, so if the other commissioners, or did you have anything else you wanted to add, Eric, about that particular nope. license? Nope, okay. So Sorry, just to clarify, because you've you know thrown out a lot of dates and um, months and things like that for different steps of this process. So we fully understand it. Are you saying, because I'm hearing early summer completion, I'm hearing July. Are yeah, you what saying, I mentioned was I'll know better in a month as to what is what the you know time frame to complete everything is. Once they finish the demolition, they're going to let us know. But my guess, based on conversations, was that it's going to be somewhere for early summer. And that's why I'm just saying July. I think we'd be prepared to to reopen the ground floor if they weren't moving forward with the transfer then we'd be ready to go for you know somewhere in that time frame okay and i'll was... have by next month i'll have a better a better idea because they wanted to complete all the demo before they had mentioned what they felt but they do a decent job and they're pretty quick but my guess is that if the demo's completed and they're ready to start putting things back by april that you know that gives us um you know 90 days pretty much to get through putting everything back together and most of the equipment, I think there's only one or two pieces of equipment that um, we were looking to order. So it's, there's not going to be a holdup on that front. So I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be beyond 
you know, July, but like I said, I'll know better in March once everything, all the demos been completed, I'll have a better idea. Okay, thank you. Jennifer, are you all set with that license? Do you have other questions? I'm all set, thank okay. you. Okay, and if other questions or comments come up, we can revisit. Perfect. Um, moving on then to 2628 Center Street LLC. This is the green room. Yes. And um, I'm noticing on the renewal paperwork that the business was not open at the time of renewal in November. However, no, no additional information was provided as to why. Uh, so we are interviewing for a new manager and that business closed in September um, based on a longstanding employee who had to move. And we just have not found anybody that we felt comfortable with in terms of um, a new staff there. So that's kind of a fluid situation. And as soon as somebody's hired there, that establishment's gonna, gonna reopen. So we had shuttered for the first part of COVID and reopened uh, August of 21, I believe it was, and then um, shuttered in September of 22. So that I can, you know, I can let Annie know, cause I think, I think that's the one that I have to get or the insurance paperwork on our, our liquor liability once we do uh, have a reopening date, but that business is going to um, is going to reopen as soon as we're comfortable with new management there. And that cocktail bar operated very very successfully all the way through uh, you know all the way through to September with an awesome staff. But they don't. It's run just by basically four total of four people there, and we had uh, two of the four uh, moved to. Uh, other areas far outside of the area and then we had two people go back to school that just weren't interested in in working and it's a very specific cocktail bartender that's needed there it's not a normal bar so that i can update you but that's a fluid situation well what is your timeline um uh, you know it's going to be as soon as somebody's hired it's probably going to be two to three weeks in terms of uh, scheduling an opening date so th my guess so you're, is you're in the process hire, of hiring you're in the Once process. Somebody. You're in the process of hiring somebody now, and you anticipate that being completed in two to three weeks. As soon as somebody is hired, it will then be two to three weeks before we would reopen. So I can't tell you today, just because we haven't selected anybody yet. Are can are you in the process of a search? Yes. Yep. Is it a posted position someplace, or it is was, it? Over and yes, now? it was previously posted. I'm not certain if it is any longer. I can check with the office. We've had about six different interviews with people. Uh, last of which took place the uh, second week of January and we've been back and forth with two of them but you know I'll have a better idea over the next couple of weeks as to what we're gonna what we're gonna do how where does this land I mean this is a turnkey operation you walk by it and it looks you know apart from being dark you would think it was an operating business where does this land in your priority for reopening it given it just needs some staff? Uh, I'm not certain of the question in terms of priority. If we had staff, we'd be open yesterday. The intent was not to, you know, have the business closed, but uh, we had a situation where someone had an ailing parent and, and then everything, the dominoes just kind of fell in a different direction in terms of what happened staff wise there, right as a back to school situation was happening. So um, yeah, it's a priority. We don't want to see that vacant and it's, you know, maintained hundred percent. And if the staff were brought in there tomorrow, uh, you know, as I said, other than advertising, this, the, the place is ready to go. Um, Eric, oh, sorry. I'm nope, jumping in again. And it's been fully, <laughs> fully, fully permanent. I mean, you know, everything, all the inspections passed, et cetera. So it's, there's nothing, nothing that it's waiting on there other than staff. Right. I know Northampton is waiting on it to, to reopen because I know that it was extremely popular up until yes. um, that management. Yep left so i would think it would be a priority to get that opened up again um and just so are you aware that if you go to say google maps it does it says it's permanently closed on there we don't have any control over that other than you know when we mentioned what's going on it is closed now you know it's um it's not something we've concentrated on trying to get google or any other other social media posts that you know decide to post as they do is just sometimes that's out of our control when we reopened, it took them forever to post that we were reopened. So that's not an in-house situation. So 
I'll notify, you know, the person internally that does social media, but um, they typically will notify them when we're, you know, planning to reopen. They notify them of our hours and sometimes it takes ages for them to post properly. Right. Uh, yeah, I've been on the other side of that and it's my understanding you just so they know they can just go and they can actually take control of that site and they can just change the information on there. Um, well, so it shouldn't it shouldn't take that long, but just, you know, something for you to know or for them to know, because yep. um, it is sending out the signal that that place isn't going to open again, um, which is, of course, where our concern comes in. Um, I'll speak to our social media, the office here and see if they can get them to adjust it. Right. Re temporarily closed. And can I ask, I mean, it sounds like you're in the middle or you've been doing this interview process and I'm, I'm not hearing whether there's actually any. Like there's not been anything there. that we're, you know, I don't, I really, again, it's a public thing and I don't know who sees or hears this, but we're still in the process. Yes. I'm going to leave it at that. There's not been anybody that we're at, at this point that we are comfortable with bringing on as a manager, um, which is the first hire. There's several folks that are interested in bartending roles, which we would, once we made, made a decision on a management hire, then we would move forward in, in that manner. But um, we do need the we do need the lead person, which is the most important person though. Right. And did you start that process at the end of last year or just the beginning of this year? Well, process started in August of this past year. Okay. It's a long process. Well, I'm sure you're aware as a license commission, but um, I don't know if you're one hundred percent aware of just how difficult things have been in town. And frankly, the only folks that have been looking have been people from other establishments where I'm somewhat friendly with ownership, et cetera. And it's 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 kind of a dog eat dog world in terms of employees in Northampton right now in the service industry. And so, you know, we've also, you know, I think maybe if times were different, things would be a little different. But um, we're looking to bring somebody in without having to cannibalize somebody else, I guess is how I put it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very slim pickings in terms of service industry employees in Northampton. It's getting a little bit better, but it's nowhere near what we used to have where we'd post a position and we'd have a hundred applicants. Um, it is very difficult right now. And I think that's why a lot of establishments have clearly not opened seven days and have shrunk their hours, even on the days that they are open. And we were very fortunate with the staff we had at the green room, awesome staff. And we were, seven days a week and didn't skip a beat for you know when we had reopened all the way to um, labor day weekend uh, it was just a great staff and that's hopefully what we're going to do again but we were able to reassemble that staff after we were shuttered for a fairly extended period of time with with covid as other people had been and once they were brought on it, it worked out really well and the place was actually you know was doing great business it was a very comfortable place and like I say, we operated without skipping a beat, and I'm hoping that we can find that same same type of staff so we can, you know, once we do reopen, we can move forward without issue. But we were operating as a seven day a week establishment, which um, which is what our goal is to do again. Um, is there a point in this timeline where you uh, you would be concerned if you don't find someone to manage the place? No, I think we're going to. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm concerned because we don't not happy that we had to shutter or had stay shuttered, but um, no, I mean, I think if we were that concerned, we would have marketed for sale, but I think we're comfortable enough that we will eventually have somebody in there. And the winter is a very slow period regardless. So um, this winter, uh, you know, has just been slow on all fronts. So we're hopeful that by spring, it'll be reopened and, you know, with a solid team there again, as, a, as I said, we've always had, since we opened in 2014, there's always been very solid uh, staff, management, and bartenders. Jennifer. Yes, I just have another uh, clarifying question, please. Can you go over the timeline once again? Um, were you closed with everyone else in March of 2020, and then you reopened? Um, I noted you reopened again in August of 21. Eric, is that correct? Yes, it is. Yep. And then you were open um, through Labor Day weekend of 2022. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thanks. Okay. Eric, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I don't think it matters uh, on, on the green room, but the timeline, as you asked the question, um, 
we um, we were not able to easily reopen prior to that point because the city uh, we're a very small establishment and I don't remember exactly what it was but our manager had some conversations and um, we couldn't open up when some other bars and restaurants open for various reasons um, I think it had to do with social distancing and other things that there, we would have only been able initially when they allowed establishments to reopen I think they said we would have been able to have like 12 people in there so there was some reason why we weren't able to open from that initial period to when we did open in the summer. Um, I think it slowed us by a handful of months, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right, moving on to the next license, um, Calvin Theater Corporation. And I know you did recently have a weekend of, of shows there, mm -hmm. which was great to see. Um, how what are your plans moving through forward in terms of bookings and such and and keeping that place we're open? looking at uh reopening with bookings for late summer to early fall so we've mothballed for the winter months we have two private events that we're looking at right now for april uh two in april and one in may and then we're summer's typically very slow indoors but I'll have further information on what we're going to do that over the next month, but that that license uh, we three weeks ago, I think it was that we had um, uh, a large weekend which brought you know, almost two sold out houses into town. And uh, you know the goal is to we're mothballing for winter, and then the goal is to revamp uh, a schedule for um, you know which we would hope to have posted for late spring. Helen. I'm just curious, typically how far out do you have to book groups to come through? Uh, we don't feel comfortable doing anything less than on those larger shows, typically less than two months in advance. Okay. And are you saying that you sort of have a potential lineup that you're kind of negotiating with right now, or you're you're just hoping to have something late summer, early fall? Um, I think we are at any at any given time, it's a fluid situation in terms of booking there. We've got um, back and forth with agents and managers on a regular basis, but um, we've not selected any shows yet, if that's what you're asking for a calendar. So we're gonna make a decision in terms of our time frame. but the goal is to be, um, to be publishing a schedule for late spring that'll probably commence late summer and, and then be a fairly heavy schedule in the fall, that's the goal. All right. And then it's obviously it, until you have a show, it's just com completely closed until you have a show. Uh, yeah, it's it's all it's just show based. Yeah, it's always been it's always been that way. It's not a uh, right. it's not a nightly venue. So um, there have been I mean, we've been doing it since 1998. There have been some summers where there were no shows June, July and August. And then the majority of the shows, you know, would happen September to November. And then again. Um, you know, typically heavy schedule from uh, mid mid to late January through to May, but it's never been a summer type venue, and it it's always been based on you know always been based on booking, similar to the Academy. There's some months where it's popular music is light, and sometimes no popular music, and other months where it's very heavy. So it's always dependent on the artist, and this well, has been a particularly interesting year in terms of touring musicians. The last couple of years has been very difficult. There, you know, once upon a time, the, the I think, it, I don't know if it was the Blue Room was upstairs or if that was the downstairs bar, but the bar was open regardless oh, of if there was well, a show. I'm well aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, you had just said that it was the, it's only ever been, it's been music dependent since, since it opened, but at that time, early on, the bar was, was a pretty popular place. Yep, and that, unfortunately, couldn't run a green room and a blue room because it's the same, same, pretty much the same crowd. So, um, you know, it just didn't make sense. And that hasn't been opened um, for a nightly venue for 19 years, 18 years. So, yeah, I think 2000 and I think Natasha 2005, if I'm remembering correctly, was the last time we were open on it just because uh, we did um, when we opened up, um, when we opened up the basement, much of that scene went to the basement. It was very difficult to run the 
nightly bar because when we had shows, we couldn't have the public in the bar mm -hmm. just because of noise when a show was going on and, um, and just the control of not being able because the bathrooms were in the theater. So it was never set up to be run as a nightly bar. We chose to do it because we felt at the time there was kind of a lack other than the tunnel bar at the time we reopened, there was really a lack of that type of establishment. But when we had issues where bands were complaining about noise coming from the bar and we made the decision, because like, for instance, we had our Latin night there every Tuesday, we had different functions going on upstairs, which is what was called the blue room. We had functions going on there and we moved our Latin night over to the iron horse, which became much more popular when we moved it and expanded about sixfold in terms of people. Um, and then that saved the noise from emanating into the theater. And then we also moved most of the other um, nights that we had over to the basement, which worked out extremely well. And then we were able to have, you know, our live music without any issues and complaints because it's not unfortunately separated enough from the theater where it can be operated on a nightly basis. Actually, when we first opened, we had a we had a high end restaurant that we opened for that space as well. And, and we had to close the restaurant for the same reason. It just wasn't conducive to doing a live show and having people in a restaurant. It was just two very different functions. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, it was initially opened as a, I think at the time we were open four nights a week as a, as a standalone bar, but it's just not set up to be able to do so now. Well, I think one of one of the concerns that I, I have, I can't speak for Helen or Jennifer, but one of the concerns that I have about three of these licenses that we're discussing, Pearl Street, Calvin, and the Iron Horse, is they, they're they event dependent. And you've said that this has been a very, obviously, very hard time for touring musicians, touring mm -hmm. performances and the like. But it's also been a time where other venues are actually flourishing. The Race City or Race Street, Gateway City in Hoyoke is a very busy venue. The park No, they've actually, I mean, I don't know if you're aware of what's going on there, but they're, they've, they've had to... Uh... There's a whole different situation going on there now. I'm not going to speak publicly, but yeah, that's. I hear what you're saying, but it's it's the actual the actual situation is 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 a little bit different. Of course, there's there's going to be specifics to each one. I don't I'm not aware of, yeah. but but it is it is a venue, um, and so I can take that off my list and go with the venues that I know are busy. The Drake and Amherst is quite busy and booking. Uh, the Academy of Music we have coming constantly for licenses because they've become very busy. The Parlor Room is reopened and busy and of course there's a new uh venue here in florence at bombix mm -hmm. which is also yep. quite busy well, i think the parlor room just recently reopened just so you're aware i think they, they were shut anymore. yeah yeah no they were shuttered for you know the entire time as as we were so i think they recently reopened only because the touring side of things is starting to open up a little bit now and you know the, the issue over the last year um when people started to tour again was that you'd book the shows and then if you had four shows booked for a week, you'd sometimes be lucky to get one show to happen because someone in the touring entity or in the crew would have, um, you know, would have COVID. And then all of the money that you've put into your advertising and show budgets would end up being spent for naught. So, and this has been a nationwide situation. So some of the venues have just recently reopened. And um, so, you know, I'm aware it's, it's, a, it's a business we're in. I'm very much aware of it. And I'm also aware of the, you know, surrounding establishments that have opened. Um, you know, as we're going to talk to the Iron Horse, I'll talk specifically about that. But, you know, there's venues like the Drake that um, have a very different model. And it's something that, you know, we're obviously looking at. But the Iron Horse, for instance, was a seven day a week venue that had a full kitchen and a full bar. And the only way to operate that was to be able to at based on what we are, you know, what, what our present situation is in terms of how that has operated for previously operated for, you know, 40 plus years. Um, being able to book even five nights a week now is is impossible. And so I won't jump ahead of myself. I'll talk to you about the Iron Horse when we get to that. But the situation like Ray Street and the Drake is very different. They might have in any, like I think the Drake has, uh, I think six or seven shows for the whole month of February. Um, you know, we used to do that in one week and it's a very different situation um, than, uh, you know, than what we're, you know, what our typical model is and we were hoping that at this point we would have been back to the ability to do that but the touring entities still haven't fully ramped up and you know it's moving in a much much better direction over the last few months than where it was previous which hopefully we'll start to get back to normal within the next six to 12 months of what's available for touring but 
you know, most of the venues, the, the size of the Drake or the Iron Horse or Race Street, um, if you look at what their calendars are, there's a handful of shows a month, um, as opposed to, you know, six or seven shows a week, which is what it used to be in terms of Iron Horse. Well, let's, um, but Helen or Jennifer, did, did you guys have anything to add or ask about the Calvin? Yes, I had a question. Um, Eric, did you mention you had a few private events coming up at the Calvin? You had two uh, in have, April, yeah. one in May? We have two events that are looking at April and one that's looking at May. I'm not certain if uh, those are going to move forward or not, but we are soliciting for, and we have always done private events. Um, not many, just because it was always tough to book a private event. And then if we had a popular artist that was looking to come through, that's why we've kind of shied away from weddings, et cetera. But as we were not having anything on the schedule from a live music standpoint during those months, we have entertained some offers and nothing's been selected at this point, but you know, those types of things and graduations. And there, there's a lot of things that we previously had on the schedule, similar to what the Academy, uh, what the Academy does, but we've typically stayed away from a lot of the privates and we're looking at that again. Okay, but as of right now, you don't have any private events either on the calendar? Nope, there's two in April we're looking at and there's one in May. Um, so Eric, if you had full control of the situation, um, what, um, in terms of the touring uh, bands and things like that, what, I guess what would you predict? How how many events would you like to be booking starting? It sounds like end of summer. Well, Calvin, the, Calvin's typically fall. had on a low season anywhere from thirty eight or forty events to a high you know a high year where we might have had ninety events. So it really it's fluctuates based on you know what's available and what makes sense. So it's and hard to say, but that okay. you typically had an average of four to six you know on a low side four to six events kind of uh, a month there. So, and that is that what I guess what are you looking at potentially for this? I, mean, I don't think sounds like not until fall. I don't think we'd be looking at running it any any differently than we have for 25 years. In other words, if we if we put a schedule together, then it's going to fall together kind of similar to how it how it has been for you know since we had opened, other than COVID. Um, I mean, I, again, I think we were you know on average you know anywhere from say four to six on a low end, and maybe six to eight on a high end a month. And that was always based on, you know, seasonally and what was available for touring. Mm -hmm. It was never a seven and a, you know, it's never a nightly venue, but it was never, it was never operated that way from a music standpoint. And I have what's um, a very subjective question, but how so, important is, is hard alcohol to someone coming to a show? Very, very. Like if they you you booked a fantastic act and people knew that they couldn't get a gin and tonic not to be whatever glib I mean, about it they I, I don't, might I, not I, come I, or um, just I can't answer that subjective I could tell you that without that license we wouldn't be able to operate you know in the manner by which we've operated it's uh, you know so I think people come with expectations especially certain shows people come with expectations that um, at least as they've come to our shows since. We opened in '98. Um, you know, I think uh, I think the expectation is that they, you know, are going to be able to get a, a drink, whether it be beer, wine, or hard alcohol. So I guess that's my question: like, would beer and wine, um, sir, it would you know, be be just as good as if there wasn't hard alcohol available? I can't answer that. And I know it's subjective. I know. I mean, I yeah. yes, I'm qualifying. I mean, what is the basis totally of your question? But... And me What's the reason for your question? And maybe I can answer that better. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you know sort of where I'm leaning. I mean, because we're looking at like a, a, a X number of events potentially, um, you know, zero to X number of events coming up um, at your venue at which um, you would have the ability to serve hard alcohol, whereas um, there are other establishments in Northampton who would be using that alcohol license six to seven days a week um so i think that's what so so i guess i'm sort of wondering does, is a beer and wine license serve the need of people not for me it doesn't no no i can answer that easily if it did i wouldn't have sought and paid for an all alcoholic license for the same reason that we're having for however many shows that we might have we have the ability to serve that you know i chose to purchase a license for that reason Mm -hmm. paid for it and operated it very successfully from 1998 until present. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not denying that it's been a very successful venue. I mean, I think what we're looking at is the is the present and the future and and the and the near past um, with these licenses and the and the amount of use the licenses have gotten. Um, and you know that we're in a situation. It's it's would be different if there were unlimited li licenses or what the mayor is asking for comes through. But um, what we're looking at is that if one establishment has a license and isn't using it much, it's it's denying other establishments that. I mean, license. I think if the, so if the license is, yeah, I, I can't speak for where, you know, for where you're looking to go with this, other than saying that there's never been, nor should there be, a stipulation on whether we do four shows a month or ten shows a month or um, at that venue because the license was purchased for the specific reasons it was purchased for, you know, fair and square. And I think there's a an expectation, whether it's a private event or a public event, that someone's, you know, um, needs in terms of what they're hoping to consume is going to be going to be met there. And I think we've done it, you know, successfully for all the years we've had the license. And these are kind of extraordinary times. And I think there should be some understanding that you know, we're hoping to get back to an equilibrium balance of what this economy is. It's going to allow us to continue to do that. And there's a there's a certain economy of scale of which we have to operate. And hopefully soon that will come back to where, you know, where it was. But, um, you know, presently, it's why the entire downtown, you know, restaurant and bar industry is a little upside down in terms of what is typical. And I'm not saying places aren't operating successfully, but the overall the overall atmosphere is very different than where it was, you know, three years ago. I think, I think, I, I, I don't, for me, Eric, the issue is, and I, this is sort of in relation to, not sort of, it is in relation to the Calvin, the Iron Horse, and the Pearl Street. None of these venue, I mean, Pearl Street and Iron Horse have not been operating. The Calvin, you have had some traction at is it an all or nothing approach that you're having? You either have to return to the type of calendar that you had pre-pandemic or you won't do anything because the, the well, Pearl Street- I can, Yeah, I can answer it a little bit, maybe in, in kind of within our terms, which will hopefully answer your question. So when we were allowed and keep in mind that Northampton, somewhat different than many other cities that we compete against, wouldn't allow us to do shows for an extended period of time and then when we could open to do shows it was very limiting in terms of what it was allowing us and for instance we were told at the iron horse that because of the size i forget how many people but it just it was not possible for us to open based on um, a reduced capacity so what we did both for the iron horse and pearl street for much of 21 and into 22 we moved all the shows that we had booked those that didn't cancel and many, many shows canceled, we moved what didn't cancel over to the Calvin. So we operated, um, the Calvin had all of the Iron Horse and many of Pearl Street shows during that period of time. Um, and it was because we just weren't able to function. Part of it was initially the social distancing requirement initially. And then the other part was just staffing. We, like everyone was having, you know, we were having massive issues being able to bring in enough staffing to operate those three venues when um, when you just you couldn't find enough staff and that was everything from bartenders to security um, you know so we made an internal decision that we would move all the iron horse and pearl street shows to the calvin and we did that somewhat successfully in order to keep those shows on the books and that you know unfortunately rendered the other two venues closed for that period of time and it, it, it just unfortunately we couldn't maneuver differently initially based on the requirements and those requirements were for the most part city requirements and social distancing um and uh, we you know we were able to move them to the calvin based on everybody being able to spread out accordingly and uh, musicians being far enough from the audience based on that stage as opposed to the iron horse where it's almost like you're in the living room so um, but that may answer some of what you know your question was but there was a reason why those venues um initially didn't open and um, i don't remember the time frame natasha but you you could you probably have that information when the city first allowed live entertainment to happen it was with a 25 percent capacity and so for instance the iron horse 25 percent capacity would have been something like 50 people and we just couldn't we couldn't do it and the same with pearl street but at the calvin we were able to move those shows and be within the guidelines of the city 
So, um, but that was really a full year plus, I believe that we had to go through that. Right. So the good news is we don't have any of those restrictions. Oh, yeah. yep. So yep. I think, uh, speaking about the, the present and the future is really, really what we're after. Um, Jennifer, did you have anything you wanted to ask Eric about the Calvin? No, I asked all my questions. Thank okay. you. Um, how, uh, sorry, quick question, just because you mentioned about moving all the shows there. Do you, I don't have it in front of me. Do you know how many shows you had at the Calvin in 2022, if you were moving all the shows there? I don't. I want to say okay. we moved 40. I don't have the dates, uh, just not prepared in front of me with that, but I believe there were 45 or so, maybe in the 40s. I believe total shows that we moved over. in 2022 there were I believe it was yeah or maybe from the end of 21 through 22 I don't know specifically in my timing just because my calendar my head is a little bit off lately with everything but I believe uh I believe maybe entirety there was 40 some odd shows that were moved okay. are you good Helen yes thank you okay um, let's move on to Pearl Street Nightclub, or I'm sorry, Iron Horse would be next. So your last event was October 22, I believe. So that, yeah, and I can answer the, the Iron Horse is in the same exact boat as the Calvin, so that we are doing some cosmetic work there now. I think the last of it is the balance of the floor work that has to go in and some painting and recarpeting of the stage, but um, we are expecting to, along with the Calvin, to book the calendar kind of at the same time frame. So we're looking at a, I'm hoping that we can publish what will give us enough dates to be able to maintain, you know, at least a three night to four night presence. Cause without that, we're not able to really have any kind of full-time management there, but that that's kind of been our situation is we've not been able to get we really need five nights but we've not been able to do it and and speaking to a lot of our peer clubs you know throughout new england area they're all fighting with the same issues where they're just not able to put you know four to five nights of decent music together a week and it's causing some havoc but we do see light at the end of the tunnel where my guess is by fall we're going to see the acts all all want to be out again and we're getting enough solicitations where i think that's happening but it's been slim pickings for, you know, trying to maintain a five to seven night a week calendar is impossible right now. And you're not willing to try for a three night? Well, we're yeah. going to have to change. So so we're not going to be able to open with food initially. And we've looked at all the other models. Yes. So that the only way it works is we wouldn't have a kitchen until we were able to establish a calendar that could get us to the five to seven, you know, event nights um, a week that is necessary to be able to hire a full kitchen staff where a wait staff can earn enough income where they're going to want to maintain a full-time job. Um, and I think that, you know, we would initially open um, where we would just have um, a bar service and not table service, but kind of similar to what other venues have had to do. And until such time as the market is adjusted to allow for either finding the right help or finding enough shows to fill a calendar on a weekly basis, um, you know, we look back and we used to do two shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two shows a night, let alone being open, you know, five to seven nights a week. So when are you planning on reopening? I mean, I'm hearing you're saying by fall, you think that touring acts are going to be back out. I don't understand. This we're because hoping. Well, because we Academy of Music yeah. is selling out shows on a fairly regular basis. I mean, yeah. we, we see them every month coming for a short-term liquor license and there's shows that i go to, to go to the website try and buy tickets and i can't buy tickets because they're selling yep. out so fast well it's it's a different situation it's a, a theater it's not a a venue that is you know needing to have five as we mentioned previous to have enough nights of music it's not we can't open one day a week and be able to sustain that venue in other words uh, your academy is not running five nights a week of music so right now, though, you're 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 you understand with with that venue not open, there's a license not being used. I mean, that's why we're having this meeting is yep. these licenses are not being used. Right. Okay. So you maintain then that in order for the uh, the Iron Horse to be a viable business to support that license that you have, that you can't have 
anything less than five shows a week. No, I'm saying that's why we haven't opened. You know, this is the, so this is the first, you know, when we got this letter, the first that we're hearing that, um, you know, that the license commission is um, looking at uh, stipulating what uh, we should be doing with the license in terms of nights or, you we're know, not. So. That's a mis. We're not stipulating yep. that at all. We we needed mm -hmm. you to come in to talk to us about the licenses because yep. they're not being used. So we're trying yep. to understand what your plans are for yep. now and moving forward in terms right. of how many nights a week you plan to be open because that's going to help us make decisions around what to do about these well, we licenses. Would hope to, you know, as we previously had booked there, we were booked as many nights a week as we could find talent that was um, able to sell tickets, and that was uh, since the Iron Horse establishment. I took over in '94, '95, and. You know, we were seven nights a week for years and years and years until it kind of dropped to between five and six nights a week. And that's what we maintained all the way up to March 14th of 2020. So your your plan now, just so I'm clear, is you don't intend to reopen the Iron Horse until you're able to resume business as you did. Until previously. we're able to have a semblance of a schedule and it's not going to be a five to seven night a week schedule because yep. that just isn't going to happen. But the goal is that, you know, we'd have at least three nights, um, you know. Are you uh, able to make any? commitments to a timeline on, on um, reaching that goal? I think I can. I, I will be able to for next month, yes. Um, Jennifer, Helen. Yeah, so, and last year, there was, were no shows or there were shows at the Iron Horse? No, the show, last year, the shows were moved to the Calvin Theater. All of them, okay. So, so I think there may have been one, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, because I don't know. I think there may have been a show, but the majority of everything has moved both from Pearl and the Calvin moved over to uh, Pearl and the Iron Horse moved over to the Calvin. Okay. So just so to just be really straightforward, and I know you have reasons for this, but is it true that the Iron Horse and Pearl Street have have not been open since closing down in March of 2020? Yeah, I, no, uh, no, that's not true. I'm, and I'm getting the venues mixed up. I think Pearl Street had, Pearl Street's had several shows. And I believe it was the Iron Horse that hasn't had anything since. I think all the Iron Horse, if I'm not mistaken, going back to the closing, I think all the Iron Horse shows moved to the Calvin. Okay. When was the last show at Pearl Street? Um, from what I could tell, it hasn't been since October 16th, 2021. No, uh, we had we had a show in Mar. There were several shows. I'm forgetting the dates, but um, no, that. We had a sold out show or two in March. And I mean, I can get you the dates, but uh, I don't off the top of my head, no. I'm sorry, Helen, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, it'd be nice to know. I mean, cause sort of what it's, it, it was my impression that um, Iron Horse and Pearl Street hadn't done anything in 2022. So essentially that, you know, you had that license. for No, we didn't do, we didn't do I don't think Iron Horse did anything. I think Pearl Street did do, there were several shows at Pearl Street, but all of the Iron Horse shows did move. And then the balance of Pearl Street shows did move over as well. Um, in August of 21. Oh, sorry, sorry, is there an easy way to, to figure that out? I mean, I don't know if you have like a, archived. Sure, so I, can point you can get you, I can get you that information. I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, I guess what I'm looking at, is it is it true or not true that there was essentially a full year of, of having license, but for two establishments that weren't open at all in 2022? Yeah, I mean, I, it, if I could just interrupt here, I'm looking at the article from the Gazette in August of 2021, when the former communications director for IHEG told the Gazette the organization had booked almost 30 shows for the Iron Horse and the Calvin for September and October, and that both venues, as well as Pearl Street, would tar were on target to reopen with full capacity and any COVID regulations that may be in place by then. That didn't happen. The Calvin hosted some shows at first, including concerts originally scheduled for the Iron Horse, but the schedule fell off dramatically this year with tribute bands playing most of the gigs. The Iron Horse remained closed, and Pearl Street had a handful of concerts before shutting down again. Um, so it sounds, I, I, I'm, I, I mean, it doesn't sound like the venue's really been open either one. So. Are you asking me or are you? No, I'm not. 
Oh, okay. Just, okay. Yeah. So that was but a handful of concerts indicating. Yeah, there were, I think there was a handful at Pearl Street. I think all of, as I previously mentioned, I think all of the concerts from the Iron Horse for various reasons, first of which being all of the social distancing moved over to the Calvin. I believe that that was, if, if you're asking about what happened in 21 and 22, um, we were not, uh, there was a period of time where we were under social distancing and mask and other guidelines in 22, and then that lifted. But prior to that, all of the shows that were originally scheduled there did move. We had a fairly full schedule that we had booked and half of them fell off due to the bands um, canceling. We had to cancel several of them and then the balance of them all moved over to Calvin. But I can get you, I mean, if you want specific dates, I mean, you know, in terms of when the last show was, we can, we can pull that up. I, I don't have that right now, but I can pull that up for you. Jennifer, did you have any, any thoughts you wanted to share questions? I do have a question about a future calendar. Um, if we met in a month, Eric, would, would you have a lineup for the spring? I mean, is that too tight a turnaround? I think it is, I think, but I'd have better information in terms of, you know, the goal was to be booking in the spring to be able to have a reopening date, which we were looking at for some point for late summer was what we were planning on doing. And that was based on what we were looking at to have three to four days a week at Iron Horse and um, kind of the standard Pearl Street schedule was typically, you know, similar to the Calvin schedule where there was, you know, it was all event driven, um, but we'd be looking to do the same thing at each of the venues in terms of how we would look to reopen. I want to stress again, Eric, we're, we're looking for plan, how you're planning to use these licenses when these licenses are going to be resumed for use. What would you what would you like me to do? Well, that's your call. You're the business owner. So I'm I and no, all I'm asking me, I'm not asking from that standpoint. I'm asking in terms of what you want me to do in terms of getting you information. Well, the, the it's you know, I don't from my perspective, what we want to know is when you're reopening the businesses. Okay. That's what needs to happen. That's the information that we, that we need. And it's a difficult thing to look at in the landscape of peer businesses locally being open and selling out shows. You know, the, the, the music world in Northampton and surrounding towns has actually been growing and there's nothing happening at your venues and the licenses aren't being used. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's the reason we're here is to talk about these licenses and whether or not they're in compliance. So let's move on then to Pearl Street which we've sort of started to discuss. Um, again, based on my research, it has not been open since October 16th of 2021 was the last show. Um, yeah, that is not correct. And I'll get you the, I'll get you the specific dates. But, but we've not done, we've not done much in 22. So, I'll, I, you know, I'm not, as I had mentioned with the other venues, I think it's in an in, in entirety, I will get you um, the information that you're seeking in terms of what our reopening plan is, because it sounds like that's what you're looking for with specific dates and how, how we're planning on doing so. Helen, do you have, or Jennifer, do you have? Yeah, and so with Pearl Street too, I mean, are you saying it's? It's in the same, they're all the same. They yeah, they're all, the they're all, all of the venues were handled. Uh, yeah, they're all handled the same in the same manner from a show standpoint and had been for years in terms of how they were booked. So you have for you have intentions to reopen Pearl Street? Yes, we do. Um, can I say I'm just realizing I have some notes going back to when you renewed the license licenses for these venues. Um, you know, on most you didn't have any extra notes, but on the Iron Horse, you did say that it hadn't been reopened through COVID, but you hope to reopen in spring. And now we're hearing you hope to reopen in fall, and I'm wondering what's changed between December. I think it's just the land. It's just the landscape of the, as I mentioned, that you know, not, not, um, 
you know, trying to be deceptive with that. I think that the goal is, you know, the goal was to be open by spring. We just have to be able to string together enough dates on a weekly basis. And there just wasn't enough touring artists to fill enough nights. In other words, it, it's impossible to maintain the venue if we have just one show that we can book for a week, but yet we have an overhead and a staff that we have to have um, to be able to, you know, work the venue on a full-time basis. And it's just one or two nights a week just doesn't cut it. And, you know, there's a lot of other venues that are set up as not-for-profit venues. That's not what we are. And, you know, we have to have a paid staff. There's not um, soft money coming in from grants and um, from bids and from colleges and all else. It's all coming from ticket sales. And, um, and as such, we have to be able to operate a fluid schedule that's going to have enough dates a week. We don't have any, anybody underwriting these businesses other than myself. And so, you know, it's in a, in a way was very similar to why certain restaurants have decided they can only do takeout and they can't do sit down because they can't find enough staff. And our situation is both it was staff and it was the amount of artists necessary to make a or entertainers necessary to make a calendar. So, as I said, thankfully, things are going in a better direction on both fronts, but still not 100 percent there. So on our our end, it was um, more advantageous and and in many ways it was a necessity to mothball as opposed to trying to operate um, venues that had to be operated at a certain scale. It's just uh, unfortunately, you know, the COVID situation extended far beyond what any of us thought it would. And even when we were able to reopen venues, the world wasn't 100 percent ready for that yet, both from a standpoint of hiring the right staff and also from finding enough of the entertainers to fill the schedule so it's pretty straightforward on that front and that may be counter to what you know the desire of the commission is to just have the venues opened and i'm hearing that now but we like many other venues have had to wait it out um, for longer than we had hoped and you know, the Calvin maintained a schedule all the way through three weeks ago. So the Calvin was open and, you know, absorbing some of the stuff that we couldn't, um, for financial reasons, be able to continue in those two venues just because there wasn't enough of a uh, schedule we could put together. But by moving it over to the Calvin, it made sense to have one venue with a decent, decent calendar rather than three venues with a very sparse calendar. And we're hoping that you know, as things are starting to open up from a touring standpoint and open up from people actually looking for work more than they were previous, the goal is that, you know, we can come back to you with uh, obviously a little bit more concrete time frame, and, and then hopefully soon after uh, start to see a, a schedule that, you know, is going to allow for activity in the venues again. Eric, has anybody approached you to purchase any of your unused licenses? No. Mm -mm. And there have been licenses, you know, there's, there were active licenses for sale for, you know, for quite a while. And, uh, um, and there's still some businesses and licenses that are, um, you know, or at least some of the businesses that are sold. I think there's a lot of restaurants that have been trying to shop themselves for, you know, much of the last year, two years. Sure. Um, no, we've, we've had to. Yeah, but no, nobody, nobody has in fact to. Yeah, no, we haven't we haven't had anybody at all. Sure. Well, there's currently no licenses for sale in the city that, mm -hmm. that the commission is aware of. And Annie is can speak better yep. to that, but she does keep a list. And we recently had a lottery for a special act license. So three restaurants are actively seeking um, a yep. full liquor license. So this is this is why we're having this meeting today, is because mm -hmm. we have a need for licenses and we are concerned about your unused licenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um Helen and Jennifer, did either of you have anything else you wanted to ask Eric or comments about Pearl Street specifically or anything that we've already discussed? Um, I don't know if it's a question or a statement and, and it's likely you may take offense at this. So I apologize in advance, Eric, but I guess I think we are all speaking for myself. Um, I am trying to understand or know at what point you know, and I think Jennifer asked us, we would have confirmation that the businesses will reopen. And 
Um, I say this hesitantly, but we have seen minutes from previous negotiations about licenses where promises were made by yourself about venues opening in the near future, and one of those venues never opened, um, you know, and that was, what, like 10 years ago or something like that or, or, or less, but anyway, um, so, so I guess that's a concern. I guess I'm saying it as a statement. That's the concern is that we... We certainly want your businesses to succeed. I mean, you know, they're almost synonymous with Northampton, a lot of the businesses that you've created and, and you know, have been brought joy to many over the years. Um, but, and of course, we'd like to see them reopen and, and thrive. Um, but I guess I'm just wondering how assurances can be made that that would happen. And I'll know, report, like, I think I'm going to report back as I, as I had mentioned as we discussed each license to the commission and i think that's how you'll have a better understanding as to where we're going with everything right and i know historically that's the same statement has been made and, and things dragged out for years so i guess it's just up to this i don't know what you're referring sort of... to other than maybe you're referring to the referring to a 298 main street I'm the... not sure what you're referring to it, well, the, like with the Baptist Church, with the negotiations at the Baptist Church and the Green Room at that time, and and yeah. and what happened. You know, the that. Green Room opened, and thankfully, very successfully in 2014. And that was a, that was a, I I can go into some of the reasons on that license that I'd rather, I'd rather not. But right. I think it was pretty clear what happened with that license, and we did reopen, or did open, I should say, the Green Room, and I had to transfer another license over there to do so, and it did open shortly after that situation um i'm gonna save my tongue on that one and right. as i said but all of those licenses every single one of these licenses have operated successfully for all the years up through pandemic and mm -hmm. um and that you know the several of the businesses have operated uh, is shortly after we were able to open successfully all the way up through present so i think that um i understand the the desire of the commission and as i you know as I had said, I will, you know, endeavor to get you the information that will hopefully allow you to see the intent and, and dates. Well, but just, that, to, you know, I don't take, I don't take offense with what you said, but I do object to some of, you know, to some of the history that you see in that, you know, that the, the green room, um, we opened, um, and as I said, I had to transfer another license over there, but I think there was, uh, there were some other underlying factors at the time that were that we're in play. I'll kind of leave it at that. So I just want to be clear on, on this process that we're, we're undergoing this afternoon. This is a public hearing. Um, when we are done speaking with you and getting information from you, I will close the public hearing. And then as commissioners, we will discuss each license specifically. And then we will decide what we need from you from each license. So I just want to be clear that anything we've up until this point, this has been an information gathering, and I'm I'm sure we're going to be asking you for further information for some of these licenses, but that might, might not be the case for all of them. So this, um, I just don't want there to be an expectation that anything that we've discussed in terms of getting information from you is the walking papers moving forward. We're we're not there yet. Um, is there anything else from Helen or Jennifer that you would like to add? Yes, Eric. Can I ask you quickly? Um, you'd mentioned um, when we were discussing the Calvin's license that the existence of that theater is um, almost seasonal, for example, that you don't often don't have a lot of performances within the Calvin during the summertime. Are there any other licenses that we should think of in terms of having a season for rather than a year and, round? And so I don't I don't want you to misconstrue what I meant by seasonal bookings are often on a seasonal calendar so that we might have, for instance, in the month of November, there might be 14 shows, but then the month of January, there might be three and we might have, you know, two shows in June and no shows in July and then August could have five or six shows. It's, it's not, um, I don't, I didn't you mean to use the word seasonal as one would typically think, but it is a, it is, um, booking is, uh, if you will, at the whim of how performers tour. And oftentimes in the summer, performers would rather be outdoors than indoors if given the opportunity. And so, you know, the summer's typically lighter and then you get into kind of August 
late August and then all the way through to January and you're heavy. And then you could go for several months in the winter, depending upon touring schedules. And you might have a full calendar or you might not. For instance, we had, you know, one um, November where we had 17 days in a row and then we only had four shows that were able to book for the following December. So it, it's just, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to give you any kind of exact or precise reason other than we're at the whim of other markets and who they book and how they book it and how tours get strung together. But I didn't mean it's seasonal in that we, we go, you know, four months and then go four months without anything. It's, it is, um, it is kind of up and down based on touring schedules more than anything, but summer's typically a little bit light for indoor facilities throughout um, you know, throughout the country, most acts want to be outdoors. And then most acts are during, um, during the winter months, it's, it's always light, you know, although, you know, February is typically would be the start of a little bit better booking season. January was always where fewer artists wanted to tour in New England in the wintertime. I don't know if that answers it, but yeah, it's not seasonal, like, uh, you know, where there's nothing that happens. It's just much lighter. I understand. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. And from your perspective, Eric, all five of these businesses, all of the licenses that we've discussed today, I mean, they're all open. These are all open businesses. Um, when you say open, no, I, I, I have, uh, I think I, I think we've just went through each of those specifically. So I guess I'm not certain of the question. In other words, we just went through each license of what, you know, so the, the right, I understand, but the, the retail license renewal questionnaire, question number four says the premises are now open for business. Uh, you signed off on. I consider the licenses are valid and open licenses, if you will, and each of the businesses being worked on as as mentioned to you. So maybe mothballed was the better, uh, you know, and especially for those venues that were going to Go, be going under renovation might be the better word for that and, but um i don't know if that answers it or not does that answer the question for you jennifer uh, it's it's a difficult question Yep. I'm I'm it's not clear. You mean in terms of the incomplete paperwork from the renewals? Yeah. I think that's what she's referring to, Eric. If you under, if you recall when you filled out your renewal paperwork, Pearl Street Nightclub, there's a section the premise are open for business. If not explained below, there was nothing explained. The iron horse had an explanation, nothing explained for the green room. And this was in November when you knew it had closed in August or September. And there was an explanation for what is happening on Center Street Cafe, but for two of them, there was nothing. Yeah, I think at the time, the expectation was we weren't gonna be, uh, I mean, just well, remember time, that, we, yeah, we weren't gonna be, uh, we didn't expect that the green room would be uh, still not with the staff. That was, uh, you know, being, open and honest about it, that the expectation was that we would have been at the time that was filled out that we were in fluid conversation and thought that shortly thereafter we would have somebody there. But um, And I guess I think we talked about this before, but just for more clarification, if, for example, um, uh, we were to say, um, we want you back in April mm -hmm. and we need to see that, that you, uh, have a lineup or things lined up for the fall. Is, would that be a timeline? I believe so. Yeah. Be able yeah. to have mm -hmm. like definitive yes. proof yep. that you would yes. be open yep. or uh, how about March? If at the March meeting, I mean, which I know is now just a couple of weeks away. I don't think in a couple of weeks I'd be able to give you a, a, I think in April I can give you a much because if, you know, we would be setting uh, a calendar, as I had previously mentioned, we would be setting a calendar um, for um, 
you know, for our, what would hopefully be late summer, you know, and going into fall by April, just based on what we've typically done, I think I could come in, at least get to Annie in March regarding um, what we had previously mentioned about 21 to 23 Center Street, where I would be able to give you a much better idea once that demo had commenced. I don't know the date of your March meeting. Um, so that's the only issue. If, the, if it's early March, I probably won't have a better idea. In April, I definitely would. But um, once the demo's complete, I'll know a date of completion for 21 through 21, 21 through 23 Center Street. But I think April, I could give you a comprehensive, um, a comp definitely a comprehensive list of um, what's happening at each venue and time frame. And I would think by that time, you would expect to have hired someone for the green room. Oh, I would hope so. Yep. Okay. So, um, but what I'm hearing too is that you were sort of saying throughout this that at the three music venues, you don't expect to have a schedule until late summer, early fall, or maybe fall. Like you, like you want to be going full blazes in the fall or as many blazes as you can um, by the fall, but there's not a plan Just being realistic summer. in terms of what we're trying to do with the reopening with the venues. I think that given that the summer months are upon us from a booking standpoint and given um, what we're seeing for um, existing shows that have already been put on the calendar at other venues and what we are hoping to do from a calendar standpoint that I think being realistic is um, we would have a set to the task of having a calendar started and booking the venues, you know, beginning in the spring so that we have a grand reopening timeframe, which realistically would be late summer or September-ish, yes. I think that's just being open and realistic is it? I don't believe that um, it's possible to do what we're hoping to do on enough nights of the week, um, given where we're already into basically spring season right now. From a booking standpoint. And is there a but I think point we'll have at a which, much better idea. This, this may be a hard question to answer. Is there a point at which you'd say we've looked at it and we've tried our best, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to open this year? Um, uh, no, not at all. Okay. Okay, anything else from the commissioners? No, I have nothing else. No. Okay, Eric, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we close the public hearing? And no, I think that, you know, I hope that our track record in terms of what we've done at the venues and in town um, can hopefully, you know, at least allow us the opportunity to ask for the time that we've discussed so that I can get you a better idea. But I think, you know, the intent is as discussed. And, you know, I think we've done and would hopefully continue to do, you know, good things in terms of bringing performers into town and bringing people into town. And I, you know, I think if not for the um, crazy COVID hiccup, which is still not 100% behind us, regardless of what some think it is still very much dis, um, you know, there's just, there is no equilibrium to what we're seeing still, but as I said, moving in a much better fashion in terms of both touring entities and employees. And, you know, hopefully as we work through putting together a schedule, uh, we hopefully can start to, you know, see some further light at that. But I hope that the commission is able to at least look favorably as to what was done and granted we're looking at the future, but the intent is to not have the licenses sit there. Okay. Um, and our intent, you know, to be clear is it's important to this commission to use the tools that are provided to us and the guidance that's provided to us in legislation and, um, and hold every license holder to the same standards. So with that note, um, if we are ready, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Annie, do you need a roll call? No. Okay, great. All right, um, Helen and Jennifer, we can um, go back and start with the first license that we discussed with Eric and the information that he gave us and take it one by one. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. So the first license was um, 2123 Center Street, 
and this is the property that Eric said is awaiting a demo permit, which he anticipates hopefully by the end of February with an anticipated summer completion. This is a full gut of the shell of the, of the building, the lower level, as well as the restaurant level um, or street level restaurant space. And he is in conversation with a potential tenant who would operate a restaurant and who would also um, have the license transferred to them. What I feel like we have good, very good information on this license and plans that appear to be in motion for use. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think um, that this is something that um, we can get evidence of within the next month or so. Um, so, yeah, that's my feelings on that. And um, certainly hoping that it does indeed reopen and July, but I'd like to, you know, get the follow-up paperwork within the next month or two about what exactly has happened. And I apologize for these dogs. I'm not used to having two dogs. Okay. <laughs> how distracting they are. I'm sorry. I have, I have two at my feet that are constantly getting shooed away. <laughs> yeah. um, I think based on the information that we've been given, my goal for this license, I think, um, is to set a tight, set some deadlines. What are your thoughts, Jennifer? Yep, I agree. Uh, I, I'm comfortable with this plan. Um, I just think it needs some deadlines to accompany it. Okay. Because, I mean, remember, there were plans to move forward with or without a tenant. So that right. um, brought comfort to me that the license will be used as soon as possible. Okay. So for, um, for deadlines, then... Uh, our March 1st meeting, I mean, there's a stated hope for an end of February demo permit that I think it's reasonable for an update at our March 1st meeting on the demo permit. I agree. Okay. Um, I would also like to have, since the reopening seems a little fluid in terms of this potential tenant I would like an update on that process um, at our April meeting. If he anticipates the 60 days to wrap up by the middle of March, then he should know by April 1st or the first week of April if that prospect is moving forward. I agree with that as well. Teach okay. on prospect. And um Goal with a goal of July for operation. Okay. Are there any other dates that you would like to see as action items for this license? Well, he does have the target reopen date in July. Do you want something set for the summer to confirm that either way that that establishment's open? Yeah, I guess if the at the April meeting, if we get an update on the prospect, if they're moving forward, then we'll have a timeline for them. Um, if they're not moving forward, then we would have a timeline, I guess, for the basement reopening. Is does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. And of course, you know, any any updates that we get would be subject to potentially additional timelines required based on the information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Annie, for um, administrative purposes for this, do you want us to vote as we finish up discussion on each license or wait until the end of our discussion on all licenses? I think it's probably easier if you vote on each license, but if it's, I mean, whatever whatever works for you that works for me um so and can i just clarify for an update at the march meeting is 
is that mean that Eric is in attendance or does that mean that he needs to get me the information so I can report to you at the meeting? I'm satisfied with you having the information and providing an update if Jennifer and Helen are as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, it you can I think you can do the votes all together or one by one, whatever. Okay. I think doing them one by one would keep keep it in order better. Um then I will make a uh, a motion to and Annie, I need, I'm going to need your help with this. So we're going to make a motion to request an update at the March first meeting regarding a permit for the end of February. Is that um? So the agenda item is to determine whether the licensees have ceased to conduct the license business and whether okay. they have to cancel the following licenses. Yep. So that's what. So we would be making a motion to maintain the current license for 2123 Center Street LLC with the following conditions. Um, yes, but, and the licenses are already, like they haven't been canceled. So. And does it need a vote at all? If the license is not being canceled, does it require a vote? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm questioning. I, I don't I don't think it does. Um, but I also want to make sure that your what you're requesting is solidified. Um, I think maybe to be safe, vote on it vote on that it, it's being maintained as is with the with the following conditions. Okay. All right. Then yeah, you can't hurt. Okay, that's fine. Then I will make a motion to maintain the license for 23 Center Street, 2123 Center Street LLC as is with the following conditions of updating the license commission by March 1st on the anticipated end of February demolition permit, followed by an April update regarding the current tenant prospect with a subsequent timeline for reopening either with the tenant in place or just the basement. Back. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Then moving on to 2628 Center Street, LLC. This is the green room. Um, I know. You know, I certainly empathize with the service community and the difficulties in hiring staff during this time. I, it's, I, I don't own a business myself, but I'm hearing that we are um, sensing that we're starting to come out of that from a, a em employment aspect. Um, and I also understand that this is a, a very specific type of establishment and it was incredibly successful when it was open, providing the types of drinks that it was providing. Um, so I do understand that that um, that Eric would want to maintain that. Um, hence the time it could be taking to get re-staffed. Um, but again, I think that it's having a timeline on this license is really important because it's a turnkey business that's sitting there getting dusty with a license 
that's not being used. What are your thoughts? And I'm open, obviously, to whatever you have in mind. So then um, in terms of what you're saying, Natasha, are you, and in terms of a timeline, are you saying that you would um, say, for example, that it wouldn't be canceled at this time, but you would like to see it reopened by a certain time or that we need an update? Essentially, we need an update in March and we need an update in April if we haven't seen any movement. I think it needs, we need a date for reopening. I don't really know that updates are, you know, updates in certain areas. So the, the other Center Street property involves a number of other players and permits and everything else. So updates on that, I think, are reasonable. Um, you know, an update on hiring enough people to open a business when there's three other businesses that are also not operating because they don't have enough people hired to operate the businesses. It seems a little too gray. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I mean, I'm also, you know, sort of underscoring too what um, Jennifer pointed out about signing off on these licenses, saying that establishments are open and there was no notice about contingent on or that I'm searching for new management or anything on the yep. license itself. Um, yep. So then how do we pick a date with the information that we were given? It's kind of, it's not a good setup for the license holder to propose that, to be perfectly honest. You know, it doesn't seem, I mean, if we want to talk about the, the facts of it, as we see it, the renewal paperwork is incomplete. There is no explanation or acknowledgement that the business was in fact not open. And this paperwork was completed November 21st, 2022. And we know that the business closed in August or September. It was, there was a post on Instagram about it. Um, you know, there was, and from what Eric said this afternoon, it was, I think the second week of January when he spoke with somebody about um, hiring for running the place. And the paperwork was filled out in in uh, November, so it was known known at that time. What direction are you guys leaning in for this one? I guess since you um, proposed sort of about having a timeline, is there a timeline that makes sense in your mind? Um, and, and I, so what you're saying is, if not reopened at a certain date, then then the license would the be license revoked. Would be but I'm also um, as concerned as Jennifer has been that the paperwork was not filled out in entirety. So it was, you know, an omission of information. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's an important thing to consider. Jennifer, what are your thoughts? I do understand that the hiring challenges. Um, I mean, that's that's a struggle. I mean, my business has open positions that we're unable to fill. So I do, you know, I feel that. However, you know, there, there is a license for a business that's not open. Mm -hmm. And we've asked other businesses that close to surrender their license. You're absolutely right. Uh, but then to complete the thought without a license, I mean, there there is no green room. So I, I you you're absolutely spot on, and we have asked other businesses to surrender the license, you know, that they were not using. Um, the, I mean, I will point out the difference in the other cases that there was a, a grand announcement of closure 
um, with, uh, with the licenses that were then taken back. Um, so it was, it was sort of made clear to the public that it was closed and this, it's more a passive <laughs> um, closure. There hasn't been an announcement of closure. Um, but at the same time too, um, yeah, you sort of don't want to just scratch on and on and on. Um, no, well, thank you for mentioning that. That is an important distinction. You're you're right. Yeah. And with the staff so small, I mean, it's very believable that you know a couple of folks moved away, someone returned to school. Like I can see it. It's. Um, however, I, to be a license holder, there's a responsibility. So we need to make sure that this place has to reopen. So are, would you be leaning towards a required date of reopening or would you be leaning towards canceling the, the license, revoking the license? I'm leaning towards a reopening date because this is turnkey and ready to go. It seems of all of the licenses that we've discussed, it's the least complicated. There's no acts to book or anything else that requires it to be or even flooring to be installed i mean this this yeah. place is is ready to go helen what do you think of that angle um yeah that does make sense i mean the, the options as i would see them is that um we say i mean i would i would not say cancel at this time um i would like there to be time to to fill those positions um and then um so option one is to say, if by X date it's not reopened, then the, the license comes back. Or if by X date it's not reopened, then we're having another hearing to determine it. But of course, then we you know, keep pushing it forward. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's other establishments that are looking for licenses as well, who, are, who would be using them immediately. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess I, I don't know what that date would be. And, uh, and I don't know if you have a date in mind, Natasha. I mean, I, I, I don't, um, 60 days, you know, two months. And, and what do you, is that too long, too tight? It's turnkey. It's, and I, but I understand the staffing thing. I don't want to underestimate that, but at the same time, there are other places that could use this license. Um, my leaning was more like June 1st, which puts us halfway through the year. And if it's if it's essentially gone unused for half a year, you know, it needs to go somewhere where it's going to be used. Jennifer, what do you think of that timeline? Uh, well, my notes for the green room is that they close in September of 22. Yep. Uh, I'm just trying to follow. Helen, can you explain your thought one more time? I, um, just, I mean, I guess I'm just looking at this year, you know, not, not oh, back, back more the last calendar year, year. And that the calendar year, the licenses for this calendar year, and if it goes unused for six months you know that's sort of six months that it's been taken out of circulation you know, and and at the same time hoping that that gives plenty of time to to hire some kind of staff or make a plan to lease it to someone else or something i would support that okay um so what we're saying then is we are going to leave this this license, maintain this license as is, but require that the establishment be reopened by June 1st. Yes, and I guess does the statement need to be made that, I mean, does it need to be explicit that if it's not open by June 1st, then yep. at that point, the license is considered canceled? And is that something yep. that can be done? Or, and, and I guess my question is that, is that something that can be done or does it require then a public hearing at that time? Answer the license. 
Annie, oh, no question for you. No question. Um, I would, I would just vote on it now, and I can, I can just clarify. And if we need another vote, you can vote at it at okay. another meeting, or if we need another hearing, then we set one for June. Okay. Then are we ready for a motion? Right. And of course, just making the statement with the understanding that we hope we never get to that point of June first. You know, of course, yeah. that's plenty of time that it yes. that it'll be yes. open and yep. we, be successful we want, as it was before. Yes, so. I'd love to see it more successful. You know? yeah. yeah, I'm rooting for all of these. Yep. Okay, so do you want me then to use the language that June first or the license is considered canceled, and then we'll just re? hopefully we do not get to that point, but do we get to that point if we were required to have a hearing for a second vote, then we would do that. Okay, that won't be part of the motion. Then I will make a motion to maintain the current license for 2628 Center Street LLC with the condition that the establishment be, be reopened by June 1st, 2023, uh, or the license will be considered revoked. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay, Calvin Theater. Um, I think the Calvin's a really important place for Northampton. It's an important business. Um, it'd be great to see more shows getting booked there, but for the purposes of is the license being used in that establishment or not, it has been used more than any of the other establishments in the last year. Um, my thoughts would be to maintain this license as it is. It's the, you know, what are your thoughts? Oh, yes, I, I want to maintain this license. And I think if we ask for updates in a few weeks, it sounds like he was close to um, signing agreements for at least at, I mean, at the very minimum, some private events in April or May. So I do feel that that there's action um, and that if we have a follow up um, that he would have positive information to share. Okay. Um, then timeline for follow-up. I know you mentioned a couple possibilities in April and one possibility in May for private events. Um, I would think uh, that we could um, sort of book the follow-up in April along with the other follow-up that we already have there um, because he did state that by April he should know about um, late summer, fall dates and okay. schedule. Does April make sense to you, Jennifer? Makes total sense, yes. Okay, then I will make a motion to maintain the license for Calvin Theater Corporation and require a update on calendar bookings at our April meeting. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated. So I'm struggling with the um, with the music venues because of the volume of music we're seeing at other venues. Um, it is a tough one, but again, the Iron Horse is a, I think, an iconic business for downtown Northampton. And I would hate to handicap it to the point where it would be difficult for the license holder to sell the business with a license if they chose to do that, or if they were able to reopen it um, and put that license back to use. But it is currently not in any use at all. And it doesn't seem like there's going to be any movement until potentially the fall for a calendar.
What are your thoughts? These last two are the trickiest for me as well. Yep. Yeah, I agree, because obviously we're all rooting for these things to to open and be as successful as they were in the past, if not more successful. Um, um, and at the same time, I don't want to keep kicking the can down the road um, with the licenses. Uh, uh, stating again, I wish it were a non-issue. I wish there were plenty of licenses for all, but we don't know if that's going to be a reality. Um, in the future and every time that these licenses are just sitting there denying other establishments the ability to use a license every day of the week. Um, but having said that, I don't I don't know. I mean, I uh, I am almost thinking again of pushing it and with both of these with potential not not canceling at this time but requiring an update in April. But I don't know if I mean, as we did with the green room, the other option is, you know, giving a open by date. Um, but with Eric saying it's likely not going to be until the fall, then where does that leave us? You know, is that useful? I come back to other music venues selling out currently no i live so close to bombix and to see their parking issues and to just feel that volume um and knowing that the iron horse and pearl street are just sitting idle it's it's tough to tough to understand Right, and having, you know, playing devil's advocate, I mean, I did, and Bombix is getting a lot of press today, um, but, um, you know, looking at their calendar, I think they have 13 scheduled for, like, 13 performances scheduled in March and April, around that many in April, too, which, of course, that's, um, yeah, like, I guess, is that the sort of quantity that Eric is suggesting would, would be enough for his venue or not. I mean, that it is, you know, it's essentially half the dates of each month or a little bit less or are they have something scheduled. And I don't think they were designed to be open, you know, right. um, certainly not seven days a week. It's not that kind of venue. They are also doing it with um, beer and wine, um, which is yeah, the yeah, point yeah. I was trying to make. <laughs> um, but I know that Iron Horse is a, is a different kind of scene. Obviously, it's the whole restaurant and bar. But now we're talking about the restaurant not even opening. It might just be the bar, um, which one could argue makes the bar more important. I realize I'm talking in circles. But, um, you know, I guess the question, yeah, I don't know. But then the licenses were renewed. So I, I do feel a responsibility to to give Eric a chance to get get these up and running. I mean, if we asked for four one updates on these two, I mean, is it, I don't know if he'd know who's coming in September by April. In uh, as to that, I was going to say by that's why I asked him. I mean, by his own statement, I mean, if he would say by April, he would have information about fall bookings, um, you know, or the or the upcoming schedule. And I understood it as for for all three music ven venues. Just going to keep muting because of the dog. I apologize. Oh, it's okay. That's okay. Um, I don't feel. I'm not willing to give um, so much space for updates on bookings for the venues for Iron Horse and the and Pearl Street especially. We, you know, you just looked at the calendar for Bombix. There's 13 
shows each month for the next two months. And they're not even using beer and wine at all of their shows. It's kind of a business decision to not be reopening or actively booking. And I don't think that that is fair to the other business. I don't think it's fair to the other businesses. I don't think it's fair to the, the three other restaurants who didn't, weren't successful with the lottery the last time, you know, it's asking somebody, some, you know, Eric said repeatedly through our discussions that the, you know, the acts aren't ready to come back out there, you know, yet he's looking at a calendar for the fall, which is right before winter. So if it's true that, that acts don't want to tour, why are they going to want to tour right before winter months for indoor venues? I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see any of that coming to fruition. And it really comes down to, again, looking at these peer venues that have performances. The Academy is booked all the time. Bombix is booked all the time. And yes, they're different business models, but it, it, it negates the argument that people aren't coming out to play music and that people aren't going out to see music. I mean, these, a lot of these shows are selling out. You know, and I want the, the Iron Horse is important to Northampton. No matter, you know, it's, it's the, been in business for over 40 years, but it's not open. You know, I don't want to see it go away. I don't want to handicap it. I don't want to do that. But I, I at the same time, I can't, you know, looking at, um, I'm just not sure what a timeline is going to do for us. We'd be accepting that the license really isn't going to get used until the fall, supposedly. And again, this, these are, I think, um, in looking at the other venues that are getting booked, I think that maybe there's decisions being made around bookings. We have no control over that. The only thing we can control is say, you need to open your business or you don't open your business. If you don't open your business, you can't sit on a liquor license. So that's, so I, I just don't know where the update on bookings is going to get us other than kicked down the road until the next meeting. So it brings us back to our mission, um, which is to uphold the standards of the licenses to the best that we can based on the legislation that we have. So if we were to maintain this, this license for the Iron Horse, I, I would propose that we have an open buy date, period. However you wanna use the license when you're open, I mean, there's myriad ways I'm sure that they could reimagine that business, but the license needs to be used. And do you have a date in mind, Natasha? I don't. I don't. I just feel strongly like we can't. I don't. I don't see the point of an update. Mm -hmm. So you sort of see it similar to the green room. Mm -hmm. I do. In yes. terms of, it, right. it, admittedly, and uh, you know, to to the credit of the license holder, a lot more complicated than the green room. Right. You know, I get that. I totally get that. But again, there, there are musicians touring right now. And I'm speaking specifically about the Iron Horse. I, I feel a little bit differently about, about Pearl Street, but I, in terms of um, how are we benefiting Northampton with our choices? I think that hoping for an opportunity for the Iron Horse to rise out of the ashes like a phoenix is a positive, um, but it can't be a never-ending process. 
Um, so would you propose the same motion that we accepted for the green room to give them a 6-1 reopen date and to revoke the license if they're not in compliance of that? I would. Helen, I think I interrupted you. So did you have a thought? No, that's okay. I mean, I'm also just rehashing that the, the Iron Horse license wasn't Last year's license wasn't used for a full year, a statement without, you know, <laughs> what where that leaves us. But um what I'm sorry, could you repeat what well, just just that I, I'm just sort of thinking out loud that I mean there was a full year yep. where the license wasn't used. Not saying that that's a good track record. Um uh yeah. So uh, and then Yeah, so so in your thought and Jennifer and Natasha, if it's if the it, the establishment hasn't reopened and that's in any form versus indications that it will it will like clear indications that it'll reopen. I'm just sort of trying to figure out the nuances. You know what I mean? If by June first there is a schedule up for the reopening in um August, is that considered reopened? I'm not trying to complicate things. I'm just trying to think through what could happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to be the obstacle to reopening if he gets to 6 1 with August shows on the calendar. Right. And then there's the reality, too, that, I mean, obviously, um, you know, Eric would be booking in advance. So they're, I mean, he and vans need to book in advance. Um, so there would have to be not, I mean, there has to be knowledge ahead of time to, to, to schedule these things, because there's a lot that has to go into reopening. Um, um, but I guess, I mean, along the lines of what you're saying, Jennifer, um, How do I ouch this? I don't want the perception to be, I'm going to be honest, and I know anyone can see this, that, that, or the accusation made that because of the license commission, these two revered venues couldn't open. But I also, at the same time, don't want that to sort of cloud my judgment on what's going on. You know, I mean, it seems like it's from the owner needs to be making a decision and maybe has made a decision or hasn't. It's it's frankly unclear to me whether these establishments are gonna reopen. Um, and I know that really the only piece that we're dealing with is the license and is the license being used properly. At the same time, we know that there are consequences or or perceived consequences or, you know, fodder for um for rationale of why uh, an establishment didn't reopen. Um, but then I don't know where that brings us. I don't know if that mm -hmm. brings us back to there need to be clear indications by a certain time or or if you really just say it needs to have opened at a certain time. I think it needs to have reopened at a certain time. And that's, you know, looking at considering it had the license hasn't been used really in a year. Um, I completely understand, you know, pre the in the height of the pandemic, everybody was under restrictions and nothing was business as usual. But for all intents and purposes, business as usual has been has been occurring for the past year. But I also, um, you know, setting a timeline for reopening, then yes, to Jennifer's point, what does it mean if there's shows, if does reopening mean by June 1st, we see shows in August? I mean, it, it's going to have to be a firm um, mandate that it's 
reopened. Otherwise we're going to have a, we're going to have conditions all over the place. And then we're not, then are we doing our jobs? It's, I don't think it's up to us to be concerned about aspects of when, what's, you know, seasonal contracts for bookings and things like that. I don't, I think it, it create it makes the decision far more complicated when we start to consider things that are other people's jobs to worry about. Um, I go back to, to that on the, this is one of the two licenses that he put a comment on, which was saying that they had not reopened through COVID, um, which as we know, other venues have, have reopened previous to this and that hoped hoped to be open in the spring. And that's something he filled out, I guess, in November. And now we're just four months later and now he's saying the fall. Um, I mean, if, if in November he was saying he was hoping to reopen by spring, then having an expectation that he's reopened by June 1st, I think is reasonable. All right. Sorry, it's my turn for the dogs. I do agree with you, Natasha, that if we put our visors on and, and we focus um, on our position, as a licensed commission, it, it is an easier decision than I feel um, it's harder to look at as a community member, you know, with these great loved establishments. Um, I mean, that's the struggle. It is, yep. And in, in that light, having a June 1st deadline for reopening um, I think honors that it gives an opportunity to do what he said he would do in his renewal paperwork, which was to be reopened by spring. Yeah, I agree with that a lot. Yep. So... Are we ready for a motion? Do we? Helen, do you feel ready on that one? Sure. So I, I sense, uh, so you're, the motion will essentially be the same as it was for the green room. Yep. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, then I will make a motion to maintain the license for Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated with a stipulation that the establishment reopened by June 1st. Um, if it does not, the license will be considered revoked. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Um, that brings us to Pearl Street Nightclub, which was um, another renewal that had no explanation for why it was not uh, being reopened. I know Eric feels that there had been a number of performances, um, but based on the research I did, the last one was October 16th, 2021. Um, I can't think of a place in town that has been felt more shuttered than Pearl Street has felt shuttered. Um, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't look like anybody has any intention to reopen it. It doesn't, based on everything that's been said about the difficulties that he's had with bookings, I can't imagine how, um, how that is going to reopen to a point where it's going to be viably using the license to be honest. Uh, 
um, yeah, there really wasn't anything said that indicated to me that that there's a timeline for this one. Um, I'm really holding out hope for the Iron Horse and that that comes to fruition. But my position on Pearl Street now is that that license is absolutely unused. There's not a viable plan in place to reopen in the imminent future. And if I were to make a motion right now, it would be to suggest that the license be revoked. Mm -hmm. And it would be revoked, Natasha, because of the chapter 138, the section 77. Correct. That's saying that after the license commission hearing, if a licensee has ceased to do business, that we can cancel or revoke the license. Correct. Helen, what are your thoughts? I see your brains operating. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I so here's my thought. I'm trying to um, uh, um, thinking to myself about whether that's consistent with sort of our rulings on the other venues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because what makes it different, say, than Iron Horse, and you know, I mean, at least there were indications. It's in our discussion with Eric that they're doing some renovations, and they are, you know, here are all the reasons it's been difficult to reopen. Um, but they are looking to reopen. I didn't sense that with Pearl Street. Um, although it's my understanding, I could use renovations. Um, but. Uh, you know, and and both Iron Horse and Pearl Street, essentially, the license went unused for, for a year. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Uh, and you know, I I'm, I want I I want to revisit um, the article that I quoted from in August of twenty one where the communications director for IHEG told the Gazette that almost 30 shows between the Iron Horse and the Calvin had been booked for September, October, and really none of that came to fruition. There were some shows at first, and yes, I get it, there were cancellations, but um, you know, Pearl Street been, has been shuttered. Yeah. I mean, it certainly has that appearance when you walk by it mm -hmm. as well. Um, that it's right. been shuttered and neglected. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's holding on to a license that could be used in another, to help make another place more vibrant. Um, yeah, I think I'm in agreement with you, Natasha. I don't know how you feel, Jennifer. I think all the other four licenses had a, had better action plans. This one, I just didn't see any actionable items. And I just walked away thinking that Pearl Street is just a dormant, yeah, a license not being used. And the and the paperwork didn't didn't help, right? We we didn't receive any additional information there either. Yeah. So yeah. Do we feel that this is, um, I mean, if we're being reasonable, that this is not a bit license yeah. that's going to be put into use in the near future? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems that it's, they, you know, we cease to conduct the license business at this location. Mm. 
Okay, then. And just to understand if he has a plan to reopen, I mean, that can be presented at his at the appeal. There is an off. Well, I'm just looking ahead. But if there are, if there's truly an ev avenue forward, the licensee does have an opportunity to present that. Right. Beyond tonight. Right. If the business is open, then yeah. that's a different story. That's just important to me that if, if it's able to reopen, I mean, we want it to reopen, we want it to succeed. But, but we also have to do right by our, we have to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are we ready for the motion then? Yeah. Okay, then I move to, Revoke the license for Pearl Street Nightclub Incorporated as it has ceased to conduct licensed business in accordance with Chapter 138, Paragraph 77. Second. And uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. You know, I do want this, it, it's no fun to revoke a license. It's not like pleasant at all, but I, I have to say, I really am really hoping that the timelines that we've set for the other establishments are able to be met. Um, it's better for all businesses in Northampton. And um, I know it certainly would be better for Eric. Yep, 100% agree. All right, um, Annie, is there anything else on that agenda item that we need to address? Um, no, just that there's an appeals process once um, the license holder receives a, um, a letter. It's a five day um, appeal to the ABCC, you have five days upon receiving the letter. Okay, so letter, you notify the ABCC, they send a letter to the license holder? No, I send the letter, letter to the license holder um, about the decision and CC the ABCC. And then upon receiving the letter, the, the license holder has five days to appeal to the ABCC. Okay, and this is actually in writing, it's on email that's sent. No, it's a certified letter that okay. I will send out. Okay. And then if the if the appeals process is exhausted, the licensee is required to return the license to the city. Physically, yes. Okay. I need to find out, uh, I think that actually the license has to come back tomorrow. Um, because it's, I looked at the statute to, uh, this today, and if it's, rev it stays revoked until the ABCC either upholds the revocation or denies it. And if, and if it denies it, then it, the license goes back. But if, but it's, it's hereby revoked until the ABCC, unless the ABCC determines otherwise. Does that make sense? Okay. And as a parallel question, does having a hearing like this where we're discussing five licenses with a license holder impact in any way the uh, state's decision to give us over quota licenses? Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't know much about this. The legislature and their world and how things work. Um, okay. But I don't think so. Okay. All right. Um, Jennifer and Helen, are you all set with that agenda item? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Moving on. Um, item six, new business. This has been a super long meeting, so I don't want to keep you guys, but I do, um, because it's sort of timely calendar wise, wanted to ask Annie about 
the um, there's something in the paper recently about city council deciding to go hybrid in anticipation of change in April. Yes, I have that on the March 1st okay. agenda to talk about. Okay, perfect. Great. Does anybody have any new business apart from that? No, no I do not. Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, sorry, uh, Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. And Jeff Pepper. Yes.